Behind me right now is one of the most anticipated 4K 240Hz OLEDs that's ever been created, and people have been going absolutely bananas over this monitor, especially since its last firmware update. But the question is, is it really worth its high price, or is it overpriced and it underdelivers? Well, in order to find out, let's go ahead and take an extra deep dive into the Asus PG32 UCDM. So the Asus PG32 UCDM, which by the way was lent to me by Asus, this video is not sponsored by them. As I mentioned, is a 32 inch 4K 240 Hertz Quantum Dot OLED V3 panel with FreeSync and G-Sync support and a VESA Display HDR 400 True Black certification. Now, in terms of the overall design, honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the extra gamer look to it and I do think the Asus needs to remove the chin but you know what once you disable the LEDs you completely forget about it and it certainly will look good I think in any setup now in terms of the stand this is another critique I have the stand that comes with this thing just takes up way too much room now it's really nice that it does have a spot to mount a camera and I'd like to see other manufacturers do that but they really got to shrink down that stand for other desk sizes now it does support of course standard vase amounts and in terms of the ports pause if you need to though do be aware no this does not come with DisplayPort 2.1 which means that even if new GPUs come out with the full bandwidth 2.1 ports you will still have to use display stream compression which can lead to some issues with GeForce cards now in terms of the price and warranty it comes in at $1,299 so pretty high and a standard three-year warranty which also includes burn-in but is that high price going to make this impossible to recommend or will it soar above the competition making that price warranted well there's only one way to find out and that's to torture this thing with tests starting off with the color now i gotta say that my first impressions of the color is that it is absolutely excellent like every other quantum dot oled out there you're gonna get some really incredible color vibrancy out of this panel something that w oled just can't match in HDR and in terms of the actual accuracy well out of the box for SDR it's going to be in a mode that isn't quite right it's going to be stretching into a color space it shouldn't be the RGB balance is going to be off but it did have proper EOTF tracking for the most part now thankfully I was able to completely correct this and get it to be basically perfect using the controls with this display so that is fantastic and I will have the best settings for this display linked in my patreon in the description below which does also help support future reviews so thank you for everyone who supports me there now in terms of a color check analysis it also came in with a very very impressive average delta e of just 0.5 in srgb so this is going to be a great option after adjusting those settings for photo or video editing now in terms of hdr not quite as good although I gotta say after their latest update this does have far more impressive HDR capabilities than any other 32 inch OLED that I've seen thus far as you can see it does actually extend up to about a thousand nits and it also follows the EOTF curve up until the very end however it has a higher brightness than most other monitors in their peak 1000 mode at least from what I've seen so far so I'd like to see them allow us to adjust the RGB balance in HDR and make some slight adjustments to the EOTF curve but overall not too bad and even in a color checker analysis it was overall pretty good the only reason why I think a few of these are off is I think they were targeting DCI-P3 and not BT 2020 in the mode that I tested now in terms of the color volume we are talking roughly 102 percent DCI P3 which means that you are going to get far more color than a standard Rec 709 or standard sRGB SDR experience very good stuff there now in terms of the brightness this is very very important for how good your HDR gaming or movie watching experience is really going to be and I gotta say my first impressions are it is definitely better than a lot of other OLEDs I've tested thus far. However, it still suffers from the classic monitor issue on OLED, which is that unfortunately it just doesn't get bright enough, especially in the 10% window to give you that impact that you're looking for that you might see 
on something like a TV. And also in a game, as you can see here, once again, it falls right in line with every single other 32 inch Quantum Dot OLED. It's basically identical, and again, gets absolutely clobbered by a 55 inch LG G4 OLED TV. So I would like to see them improve that 10% window. I think it would help quite a bit in future generations. However, one thing they did improve is like I mentioned earlier, their 1000 nit mode on this monitor is actually very usable. As you can see, not only does it peak at around 1000 nits in the gaming HDR mode, but if you take a look at something like a Google Doc on the desktop in SDR, it is giving you similar brightness to something like the HDR 400 True Black mode, which means that finally we have a usable 1000 nit mode that shouldn't be giving you a ton of compromises. In fact, overall across the five tests that I did on this new firmware update, which I highly suggest you update to if you own this thing, it was significantly brighter than the HDR 400 True Black mode, thanks to it extending up to 1000 nits when it had the capability to do so, in a darker HDR scene. Now, speaking of darkness, the near black performance of this thing, both in SDR and HDR was absolutely excellent. And in terms of the gaming, well, it's 240 Hertz and it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, not only does OLED give you that per pixel local dimming that no other monitor technology can touch, giving you incredible micro contrast, but of course you do also get the near instantaneous response times of OLED as well, meaning that at 240 hertz, not only are you gonna be getting some of the fastest 4K display technology ever created, I mean, we're talking about within margin of error of the fastest that I have ever measured at 4K, but also in terms of the motion performance, as you can see here, it absolutely destroys mini LED, and you can start to make out that it is saying better than 60 hertz, in that 240 hertz mode. And in fact, this also comes with a black frame insertion mode that allows you to run it at just 120 hertz. And it does give you the motion clarity of 240 hertz, which is really great for those of you out there who can't quite run 240 hertz at 4K, but wanna have that motion clarity and the clarity of 4K. That's a really fantastic feature. Although as you can see, it does come with the side effect of the screen being dimmer overall. So it's not all sunshine and roses. And at 120 hertz, yeah, it's still pretty good, but certainly I would be trying to shoot for over 120 hertz if you can to get that excellent motion and clarity. Now, in terms of other features, it has a ton. I mean, you get FPS counters, sharpening, black frame insertion, as I just mentioned, camera mount in the stand, a uniform brightness mode. You now get Dolby Vision, white balance control in sRGB, which is fantastic and something that I think every other OLED needs to have, picture in picture and picture by picture, and a display stream compression switch so that you can run it at 144 hertz, ideally and you won't have to have any DSC issues if that's a problem for you. Now, in terms of the text clarity in subpixel layout, it's okay. Now, quantum.oled has tried to make some changes to make it better. Has it really improved anything? I think that's up for debate. It's still in a triangle fashion, which means that it is gonna have some green and red fringing at the edges of text. So while 4K still is incredibly clear, even using QD OLED, it's not gonna be as clear as a 4K LCD in terms of the text clarity, because it's gonna look like it has some chromatic aberration at all times, though some people might be completely unbothered by this issue as it's not really super noticeable at 4K. Now, in terms of the finish and perceived clarity, I gotta say, yes, the clarity is excellent and it also has amazing vibrancy due to the superior glossy coating, but it does suffer from magenta or gray tinting when presented with even a small amount of ambient light, which is an issue specific to QD OLED and is not normal for glossy screens. So you really got to use this in a dark environment to get the full impact of that crazy contrast that OLED brings. Now, in terms of the viewing angles and uniformity, like every QD OLED, it's nearly perfect, so let's move on. And I'm happy to report I had no major issues on this display. The menu and firmware was absolutely excellent and super fast. And in terms of VRR flicker, it really wasn't too bad. Yes, there will be some in some dark games, especially if the frame rate fluctuates, but it's certainly not the worst I've seen. And in fact, it's probably among the best in OLEDs I've seen thus far. So overall, guys, I gotta tell you, right now, I think this may be the best OLED monitor that you can buy thanks to it having just so many features and especially the ability to properly white balance in sRGB. That is critical 
for serious colorists or video editors or photo editors who also want a game on their display. You'll want to know that 6500K is 6500K and it's not too red, not too blue. It's correct. And you can do that on this display. That's fantastic. And also, of course, you do get an actually usable 1000 nit mode on this display, something that I've yet to see so far from any other 32 inch OLED. So I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm giving this my nine out of 10 for the first time ever for a monitor, a nine out of 10 certified banger award. And if you're interested in this monitor, I will have affiliate links in the description below so you can go ahead and pick them up and support the channel. However, I do wanna let you guys know, I have heard some other monitor makers may be rolling out updates in the future which improve HDR performance much like Asus did and not only bring sRGB white balance control but possibly HDR as well, something that Asus currently lacks. And a few pieces of feedback I wanna give to Asus is I'd like to see them again bring that white balance control to HDR and make it instead of 1.82 point control and I'd also like to see them improve their HDR performance even further and clean up some of that EOTF tracking. But overall, very, very impressed with this monitor. Is it worth the $1,300? I'd say absolutely yes. I would definitely buy this one right now if I had to choose between a 32-inch OLED today.